A new cybersecurity project, the Threat Detections Engineering 101 project. In this video launch series, I'm gonna be overviewing my network topology, my overall goals, the sandbox environment, and the overall scope of where I'm perhaps headed in terms of a career perspective as I'm interested in this domain space. Now, even if you aren't interested in this particular area, you can see how I structure, create, and organize my projects, specifically my home lab, and how I document them. That's, this is just a way of showing what you've done, perhaps. I recognize that some of this, what I'm about to show you, is like really formal and almost a little bit overdone, but the overall kind of way I structure my cybersecurity projects is a means of kind of building out a portfolio, something that I can point to if I'm in an interview or perhaps even just sharing the knowledge forward to the InfoSec community. I am using GitHub as my means of documenting and creating this project. You can use anything you want, and I chose GitHub for this specific project. So the link will be in the description below, and. Like I said, it's a little bit overdone. I have a logo here. I have, you know, like an overview page of what I'm doing. And I realize that some of this is just for the YouTube, but really um, I want to show you or showcase what I'm doing. So what even is threat detection engineering? Um, specifically, why am I interested in it? So threat detections engineering is a means of managing the overall life cycle of detecting a threat, as the name suggests. Uh, specifically, what you do as a threat detections engineer is you, you create and manage an infrastructure which allows you to write specific queries or, I guess, detections on certain behaviors. And what you do is you manage the life cycle of those detection templates as your adversary or threats groups continue to change their tactics, techniques, and procedures. There is an intersection between threat detections engineering that I am particularly interested in. It's the infrastructure provisionment and management. Uh, so think your SEM and logging environment. And then you also have the engineering or analyst type perspective where you deploy a vulnerable environments where you can create specific detections. And based off of those templates that you're creating, you define the logic with how you are going to detect those threats. So this is an interesting space to me specifically right now because it kind of intersects various different skills that I've learned in my past or my career right now. And it's just something that keeps things interesting. You're welcome to read the this wiki space here on GitHub for learning more about detections engineering. Specifically, I'm gonna overview the network topology and kind of show you case you my thought process of how I'm doing this. Recognizing that this network topology is a bit busy, I'm gonna focus on particular sections here to break down the project scope. So as you can see in the center, it starts out with these three logos here, and these three logos represent the Elk stack, the Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana dashboard. Uh, so this is going to act as my centralized SEM system information event management system um, where I'm going to collect all of my logs and aggregate my logs, transform the logs into the ELK stack. And specifically, I'm going to have this ELK stack deployed as a web server uh, hosted on this particular domain name. So you can actually go right now and look up this domain name and you will get a login page for uh, the ELK stack here. And I'm using an Ubuntu VPS server that's publicly routable to access this. So this is going to be my centralized point of view. This is where I'm going to collect all of the logs, write out my alerts, get alerted. This particular set of technology is going to act as my centralized area or point of access. This is where I'm going to interface and access my lab environment. And it's going to collect, like I said, all of those logs. So based off of the threat intelligence or logs coming into my elk stack, you can create and write certain or custom detections as well as deploy managed or, uh, you know, third-party detections. And how this all works is through a centralized place of GitHub. So you can use any type of Git infrastructure. I'm just using GitHub as it's free. And basically what I'm going to be doing is as threat intelligence, and I'm using threat intelligence in a kind of a generalized way, but as uh, logs come into your Elk stack uh, or the SEM, I can write out specific rules or detection logic, and I can deploy that detection logic out onto a GitHub, which is going to manage the life cycle of those detections. And based off of those detections, they'll go to GitHub Actions, which will automatically be deployed. So these templates will be deployed out onto Elasticsearch, 
where Elasticsearch will be able to uh, go through, collect the logs, see if there's any specific uh, logs that match those detections. And based off of that, it's going to alert me maybe through an email or it can be through a Kibana dedicated dashboard panel. So this may seem a bit confusing as I'm probably not describing this very well here, but basically as I write out those detections, those logic template files, I have to have a means of storing them, managing the overall life cycle of those detections as those TTPs change, as threat actors change their behavior, and I can manage this all through the GitHub ecosystem. Uh, now you're going to see on the very right here, we have AI. Of course you have to have AI nowadays, but this is gonna be my detections as code AI refinement incubator. So what this is going to do or act as is as I push these template files up into GitHub, whether they're managed or custom detections that I write, what I'm going to do is use various different AI models. So OpenAI, you can use Claude, Sonnet, you could use Gemini. And basically these AI agents are gonna go out, they're gonna read those detection template files and ensure that the logic is correct. The refinement incubator is going to act like a quality control little agent that's gonna allow me to optimize as well as ensure that I don't have particular in syntax errors or anything that perhaps I can do to make it better. So I have all of my logging infrastructure. I have my detection management templates here. I have that whole entire life cycle process, but the question is how do you actually get or simulate threat detection or adversary behavior? I'm going to be employing two specific areas or technologies to gather that threat intelligence or uh, simulate adversary behavior. And that starts out with this isolated detections generator. So this is going to be a self-hosted Windows virtual machine. And there's going to be a technology called Red Canary Atomic Red Team. This is an open source adversarial framework which simulates various types of adversary TTPs. And it's all mapped to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. So what Atomic Red Team will allow me to do is simulate some various types of behavior, such as downloading a malicious file, contacting a C2 server, moving laterally, privilege escalations. There's a lot of different areas that you can use in Atomic Red Team. And basically, I'm going to have this running in an isolated Windows VM. So this is going to be basically simulating an enterprise workstation. Uh, and as I simulate that environment, all of these logs are going to be aggregated back into my Elk stack where I can actually gather, gain visibility, transform those logs. And then uh, with that, I can write detections on these particular areas. Based off of the type of activity, I can write or deploy managed custom detections, which will allow me to see what is going on. So this is the first part. The second part is actually a a complete honeypot network. So I'm going to be using my own personal project as well as a few open source projects, um, deploy this out onto cloud instances, specifically DigitalOcean Droplet. And I'm gonna be using the Docker engine on this droplet and deploying various containers, which are going to be publicly accessible. So, and these are going to be simulating various environments such as my SSH Honeypie project, which is going to be running an SSH Honeypot, an RDP Honeypot. And then I also have the open source Teapot project where I can drop in maybe an SMTP server or whatever I decide to do. This is actually gathering real world, I guess, threat intelligence. And I think a lot of this is just gonna be automated bot activity, but I'm going to be ensuring that I gather this information and all of these logs, once again, are going to be aggregated back into my Elk stack where then I can see and write detections off of that. To gather these logs, you have to have a, an agent or you know some sort of software that's going to send those logs to, and know where to send them. Uh, and so as you can see here, I have these little B logos. I'm going to be uh, using file beats, specifically the elastic agent, which is going to collect a wide array of various types of logs and send that into my elk stack here. So I've already started this project here. And as you can see on this domain, it's publicly accessible. This is like I said, it's going to be my main interface. And so everything that I do is going to be basically uh, really here, it's gonna live out here. This is where I'm going to uh, deploy my detections, write alerts, gather logs, transform logs. Uh, the elastic component or elk stack is where I am interfacing with this entire project. And it's all basically isolated out on the internet. So this is something that I can access, whether it's on my personal computer or laptop. 
So this is the overview of the Threat Detection Engineering 101 project. And uh, really what I'm trying to showcase here is my overall thought process with how I develop these projects. Um, when it comes to project development, there's two components. You have the tools, the actual technologies, and a lot of students just focus on that. Like, hey, I should go out and learn Splunk or Python. And, and those are good. You need to learn the technologies, but you also need to learn the thought process. You know, it's not just about a technology. It's about how you are using those technologies to basically um, further refine your overall skill set of perhaps troubleshooting or trying harder or whatever that may be. Um, and, and so that is where this project scope comes in. It's not only just about technologies, it's also about how I'm thinking about adversarial or threat intelligence information and the different types of unique points that I can uh, create and parse out of those logs so that I can alert on them. I do not plan to make a step-by-step -step YouTube video series of this project. I am going to compile a few videos for some interesting uh, topics within this project. And if you are interested in a step-by-step -step video, let me know in the description below what, what part or perhaps areas as I compile and post these videos. And uh, gather some really interesting information. Hopefully you've learned something new. It's a quick video, but this is how I structure my projects. And the threat detections engineering space is something that I'm really interested in, in, in exploring. And so this is where I like to do my own research is building out different projects. And I recognize there's a lot of ways you can do this, but this is just what I do. So hopefully you've learned something new. The links will be in the description below. And you know, until the next time, you got it. Have a good day.